I preached this sermon on Sunday night, pronounced the benediction, said good night to everybody, and went home and had a bowl of cornflakes. And look what's happened. Well, look what's happened. And now that you've had time to reflect mm -hmm. on it, do you not regret what you've said? No. Because what I said was the truth, and what I said was from my heart. And could I say to you, Stephen, there's not a Muslim out there or any person I wouldn't hurt a hair of their head. Muslims come to this church and listen to me every week. Well, I wonder if they'll be coming back any more. Well, they're right, at the, they're right at the prayer meeting on Monday night. Well, can, mm -hmm. I, can I just read some of the, the, the words to you that you've said in this sermon? Yes. Now, people may say there are good Muslims in Britain. That may be so, but I don't trust them. So you don't trust a whole group of people who happen to be Muslims. I don't trust them. Let me qualify that. You didn't qualify it on the night. Okay, I'll qualify an eye. The reason why I don't trust them, the Muslim has a Sharia law, and if the Sharia law controls every Muslim, and if the Sharia law said, kill Stephen Nolan, he would be killed. Said, kill Jim McCall. That's not true, and that is a deeply, not just offensive thing to say, but potentially a dangerous thing for a man in your position to say. No, it's not, because, because it's the truth. But it's the truth, Stephen. And uh, that Sharia law is a difficult law, and they have to abide by that law. Also, I said that, and I said it with earnestness. There's a young woman who's going to be hanged soon because she accepted Christianity from the Muslim faith. This is in Sudan. Just as Christians will interpret a Bible in different ways, so therefore will Muslims. And for you to suggest that every Muslim will adhere strictly to Sharia law is absolute nonsense. There are different shades of Muslim, there are different types of Muslim, yes, I agree to just that. as there are different yeah, interpretations yes, I agree of to Christianity. That. I agree to that, but I'm telling you, there are the aggressive Muslims, and there's millions of them, and they're gathering momentum, they're trying to take over the world, they're going to take over Britain, there's cell groups right throughout Britain, they're going to do this. When you say cell groups, what do you mean? I mean, men who are trained with violence. I know there are good people among the Muslim people, but they are controlled by this law. And while they are controlled, they are dangerous. So you don't trust any of them but for that reason? I don't trust them, no, I don't trust None them. of them? None of them. Say the nitty gritty came, and the authorities of Muslim said, we want you to, so to associate yourself with this man, McConnell. We want you to hurt him and harm him. I believe they do it. When those Muslims who you believe could hurt you, and it is a deeply offensive thing to say to them, where you believe that they would hurt you, you don't afford them the right to their individuality, their sense of morality, and, and their sense that they oh, wouldn't come off them. it, Stephen. I do. I do give them that. Well, then stop but sending them a message that you think if they're given an instruction, they would hurt you. It's no, a, it's no, a, it's no, a, it's no, a no, no, thing to no, say. no, it's not a stupid thing to say because of the Sharia law. Definitely. Look at it. Look at it. And I stand by that. Now let the police come to me, whatever they want to do. I'll take my stand. I'll take my stand in front of my congregation, let my congregation judge me, but they know me and they love me. And this country knows me and I've proved myself to this country. The Bible tells me that I have to treat, now listen to terminology, the stranger that is within my gates. I have to treat him or her with honour, with dignity and with kindness. I believe in doing that. But you don't follow all of the Bible. I do my best to follow all of All them. of the Bible? All of the Bible, yes, right. I do my best. Well, that's interesting. Leviticus 20, verse 10. Go on, tell me. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbour, both the adulterer and the adulteress are to be put to death. Yes. Do you follow that? Yes, well, that was in the Old Covenant. Do you Jesus. believe that someone should be put to death for no, committing adultery? No, well, no, it's there in the Bible. Uh, no, no, that was in the Old Mosaic Law. How am I not sitting here looking at a hypocrite who suggests that every Muslim is owned by Sharia law, will not use their own sense of morality, their own sense of judgment in order to decide whether uh, they've got to adhere to Sharia law, and yet 
you're sitting there able to say that you'll interpret bits of the Bible as that suits you, but a Muslim no, can't. No, I'm not interpret interpreting their their faith. You're says, interpreting I, I, I in told Leviticus it. chapter 20. Well, I'm telling it's there you. in black and white. No, listen, Stephen, Jesus interpreted Leviticus. Let me read to you some of what you said in this sermon in I this know said, church on Sunday night, which you stand over. Yeah. Islam is heathen. Mm-hmm. Islam is satanic. Mm-hmm. Islam is a doctrine spawned in hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe that. I respect the right to their faith. Well, that, but well none of them are trustworthy, according to you. Definitely not. Definitely not. Because I know. Look, look at the young soldier who was beheaded in Britain. You're taking isolated incidents. No, no. What about the 200 children kidnapped? You're taking, isolated? Isolated? You're taking isolated ah, come on, incidents. Come on, is that isolated? Yes, it is. Ah, come on, Stephen, come on. 200, look, look at the others. Look at, look at the hundreds. Now, this is not isolated. Now, we're getting serious now. We're not toying with each other. Look at the hundreds that have been tortured and martyred in different Muslim countries. Hundreds of them. Churches burned. Now listen, here's where the point and I want And Christianity has never been involved in violence? Our Christianity is a farce at times. Right. And I would admit that. But you wouldn't label every Christian as a farcical person, as a violent person, no, as someone that not. doesn't merit um, integrity, as someone that cannot be yes, trusted. Yes, but right. you do afford those attributes to people of the Muslim faith. That's right. The Muslim faith is a faith of violence. So you're a hypocrite, sir. No, I'm not a hypocrite. A hypocrite is an actor. I'm not an actor. Have you thought about looking within yourself as to whether you are a racist? And no. let, me, let me tell you the substance of that question. To label... You see, it's interesting of how you look at me very sternly when I talk about what you may be, but you're very, very quick to label a whole community in Northern Ireland. Very quick. You take a whole group of people, you don't afford them the right to have their individuality, and you label a whole group of Muslims in Northern Ireland, all of them, as as not meriting trust, as untrustworthy. Because of the Sharara law. Because of whatever you wanted to be, you label every single one of them. No, 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 no. How are you not a racist? No, I'm not. Because, listen, this church supports... They've built a village in Ethiopia. Most of the children who come there have been Muslim. We feed 600 children a day. How am I a racist? I raise thousands and thousands of pounds to do this. We also have built a clinic and a church in Kenya. We look after 1,200 children a month with medical attendance. And 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 Pastor, can those children not be trusted because they're Muslims either? Oh, I trust the children. I trust the children. You know there's capacity within any well, human being okay. to use well, their discretion well, to well, interpret well, their well, faith I would as they want that. to. I would accept that because there's Muslims come here, so they don't do that. Right. Do you trust the Muslims that walk through this door? Well, I don't know. I'd say hello to them and greet them and but love them. But do you them. trust them? Yes, Are they untrustworthy yeah, people? Yes, the I Muslims would. that sit in yes, front of you yes, here? Yes, I would trust them there. All right. Yes, so so all them. of a sudden now... Every other Muslim in Northern Ireland no, no, can't be trusted. No, no, don't be funny with me, I'm Stephen. Not no, funny. you are being funny. This is You're really poking. important. That's, of course it's important. It's so important it's so when important. a man of your influence, That's of right. your stature yes, in Northern my Ireland, stature and says you do you. not trust them. I don't. I don't trust them. Which ones? Those that keep the Shara law. The police are launching a, a race hate telephone support line this week. There, there are race crimes in Northern Ireland. Uh, that are on the increase. Now, to be fair to you, you've been very, very forthright. You condemn violence of all kinds. Absolutely. However, what if someone that can be influenced in this community is listening to a man of your stature and they want to hate a Muslim and the basis of their hate, the seed of it, is you telling them, well, they can't be trusted. So in other and words, there are cells of them that so, are involved in right, terrorism. That's right. so what if? What so, if? So, in other words, I've got to shut my mouth. I've got to shut my mouth to please you and to please others. No way will I shut my mouth. I will condemn idolatry. And it is idolatry. And it is heathenism. I will not shut my mouth. I will stand up for Christ and I will proclaim the gospel. 
These are people, strangers within our gates. We have allowed them to come in. God bless them. God help them and encourage them. And we will try and meet their need. But I believe, I believe they are gathering momentum around the world to take the world over. I'm not shutting my mouth for anybody, not even for the deputy first minister. Well, let's turn to Martin McGuinness mm. because... Not even for him. Well, the deputy mm. first minister uh, has said that he's going to raise your comments with the policing board. He has said, uh, coming in the wake of recent spate of disgraceful racist attacks against families in parts of Belfast and elsewhere, such inflammatory comments only serve to fuel hatred. Yeah, so he is saying your comments fuel well, hatred. Tell him to go to the police and tell him to confess to the police some of the things that he did in the old days, okay? Tell him to do that. He's talking like a set of bagpipes. That's a respect that I have for him. But he's the deputy first. I don't care what he is. He's got a huge mandate from... I don't care what mandate he's got. I'm preaching God's word and I believe God's word with all my heart. I'm saying it within my own church, within my own confines. I'm not going outside I'm doing it. I built this church, worked in this church, I've been in this church 60 years, I've loved the Lord Jesus, I've helped all types of people and I will continue to do but this. Helping and the, uh, people means not playing any role whatsoever and any Muslim in Northern Ireland feeling isolated, feeling that yes, they're frightened, there's no way that feeling I, that they've got a label on them untrustworthy. No, no, I, you know, no. Come on. Oh, come on yourself. I know the Muslims. I'm not fooled by them. I have dealt with Christians who have been persecuted by Muslims. I've dealt with them. I've heard their story. I don't trust them. I'm sorry. Is this hatred in you? No. There's, there's, I hate nobody. I, there's not an ounce of hatred in my body. You sure? Positive. You don't trust them. I've seen them. You don't trust them. What is it if it's not that's hatred? Pure, uh, that's pure, pure hatred, It sir. is not pure hatred at all. What is Just it? Just because I'm strong in my disagreement, that's not hatred. Come on, Stephen. Can you're you not... be trusted? What? Can yes, you, you can't trust me. You can't. How, how do you... But the you're Muslim, a Christian. The, how, yes. how can I not? How can I trust you? You're a Christian. The Muslim, you're all the same. This, Every um, Christian in this country is the, the same. In fact, you're all untrustworthy. The, the, the Muslim out there. You all follow the, the Bible. Every single word of it. Too. Every the single Muslim, word of it. Every the, single one of you put a stamp on you. You can't be trusted. Uh, what would happen there? You're not winning. You're not what, winning, what Stephen. Happen? You're not would that winning. That's a disgraceful Stephen. comment. You're for not me winning, to say? Stephen. You're not winning. What do you mean winning? Because I can. You're not winning this argument. You're not winning it at all. There are 3,000 Muslims in Northern Ireland, okay? Do you seriously think that minority group can have any influence whatsoever on that woman being hanged? Well, they could protest, couldn't they? And I could protest with them. And you could protest, couldn't you? Do you not think that what actually your comments will do will be to make it more likely that that woman will be hanged. Because actually, no you're way. inflaming a situation. How do you think your comments, if they did reach Sudan, would go down? How do you think if you were to become a martyr, maybe that's what you want to do, and go to Sudan, do you really think it would stop that so, woman being hanged or would it precipitate it? So listen, if the hanger, it will justify all that I have said. You're being investigated now by the police. So I hear. Are you concerned? No. Why? Because I know what I've said is right. And if they throw me in prison, they throw me in prison. I'll go to prison if they throw me in prison. The Deputy First Minister also said this. It is essential that there is a full and thorough investigation of these comments and their potential to generate further racist attacks. I said that in the confines of my own congregation. Your sermon's published on, I know, online. I know it so is. You know I know it it's online now, but I've said it in the confines. And no harm to Martin Guinness. Guinness. I don't accept anything that he says. Him and Jerry Adams, the whole lot of them. I don't accept anything. Why not? Because of their past. Forgiveness? part of Christianity. It is. The ability to repent. That's right. Part That's of right. Christianity. That's right. 
I just want to conclude this interview by um, by by asking you this: Do you have any sense of responsibility in yourself that people can be stirred up in Northern Ireland? Yeah, I know and that. And people can be influenced. Yes, I know that. Is there no need for you to reflect? on yourself when you've said you'll stand by it that actually you are a man that needs to change your tone very very quickly because you've got the splendor of this church around you well, then, you've got the support well, you of you the say, people that say, thousands say, of people come you here say, you're a man of tone. influence I'll just get up and say Islam is heathen Islam is devilish I could say it like that and that's tone but I said it positively, and because I believe it. I am not against these people. I don't want to hurt these people. I have no notion of hurting these people. But I know what Muslims do.